In the next couple videos, we're going to be doing hypothesis testing for a number of different tests. So just to recap one more time, the steps of a hypothesis test are first to state the null and alternative hypothesis. In this particular example you see here, we have hired and rejected uh, candidates, and the alternative hypothesis is that the interviewer spent more time with people who were ultimately hired. So we could write this here. as the fact that those the average time for hired is greater than the average time for those who were rejected. And so we convert this though into hired minus rejected is greater than zero. And then the null hypothesis is that those who are hired minus those who are rejected are less than or equal to. So they must be mutually exclusive. They must cover all the options. The equals are always in the null hypothesis. So in this case, if I write it this way, hired minus rejected greater than zero is the alternative, and then less than or equal is the null. You'll notice the way that it's written here on the left, that's the other alternative, is to the put those who are rejected first. The mean of the rejected minus the mean of the hired is less than zero is the alternative. The difference between these two tests is simply whether you're looking at a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test. It gets you to the same information. So you decide how you're going to lay out uh, your null and alternative hypothesis. Then we need to state the level of significance. As we talked about in our previous video, what is the type one error? And just to recap quick, figure out, oh, maybe I closed it already. Uh, our type one error is the probability that we reject the null hypothesis when we should not have. So we specify the level of significance. Ultimately, that is going to give us our critical value. And then we're going to compare that critical value to our test statistic. So we're going to need to specify what test statistic we're going to use and the assumptions that go with that test statistic. In this particular example, you can see that that's a complicated uh, t-test, that is the separate variance t-test. And if you're using the separate variance t-test, it has its own set of assumptions. Random sampling, we'll see that for every one of these. It assumes normality. Okay, we have a normally distributed population. It is a t, so the population variance and standard deviation are not known. And that it is independent samples. Now, what makes this a separate variance t-test is that we're assuming that as we compare two groups within the population, the variability in the two groups are not equal. There's a different test if the variability in the two groups can be assumed to be equal. So we always need to specify what is the test statistic and what are the assumptions that go with it. The next thing we want to do is draw a graph and state our decision rule. So we'll do this calculation where we do our test statistic in Excel or Python and we compare our test statistic and our critical value. Alternatively, we can get a p-value and compare it to alpha. When we do that, we will then be able to make a decision. So we're going to come up with here, this is our critical value. When we get a test statistic, if that test statistic is bigger, then we will reject the null hypothesis. So test statistic bigger than critical, we will reject H0. Alternatively, if your alpha is here, let's just do it the way we're used to seeing it here. If your p-value is less than alpha, so that you're here, because p-value would be this, 
alpha is your 0.05, if your p-value is less than alpha, then again you reject the null hypothesis. Well, this particular graph and decision rule are based on the fact that this null hypothesis and alternative is that those who it should be greater than so it's here we go are hired are more than the rejected okay so in this case you see how this is greater then it's got to be a right tail test if we were going the other way and having it less than then we'd be looking at this region over here and if we were looking at equals not equals we would be splitting the alpha uh, in two here so here we are saying we predict that the hired is greater than the rejected and that's why we're up on the right okay so we get our test statistic and compare it to our critical value or we compare our p-value to our alpha so we will reject the null hypothesis if the t statistic falls in the upper 5% of the sampling distribution, otherwise do not reject. If we reject the null hypothesis, then we can conclude that people hired spend more time, that's the greater than part, this would be a less than, than people who do not get hired. Okay, alternatively, if we had phrased this as uh, those who are rejected spend less then we would do lower five percent and then we would say people who are not hired uh, spend less time in interviews and then we have a lower left tailed test so in this case if hired is more than rejected we're looking at the upper five percent otherwise do not reject and then we can conclude that people hired spend more time in interviews so you always want to translate the test to what you ultimately come up with so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a number of different tests and follow these steps uh, through each of them as we code the test statistics um, and do the hypothesis testing in Excel or Python.